Governor DeWine's email to assure districts that we should start new programs based on this one-time funding that we're seeing right now over the state's biennium budget because we might see it again in future years is just irresponsible in my opinion. So if we're looking at all districts in the state of Ohio, the statewide impact of this, and anyone can go online to the state, the school foundation funding reports if you're bored and wanna look this up. <laughs> you can do state totals and it'll show you all districts. So for FY19, this was the deduction amount for the Ed Choice Scholarship. So there was a 38% increase when you look at FY19 or $40.8 million, 7,445 students increased from FY19 to FY20. The number of Ed Choice districts in FY19 was 41. The number of Ed Choice districts in FY20 was 164. And the number of Ed Choice districts designated for the next school year, FY21, is 423. This isn't because of districts underperforming, it's because of changes that were made to the legislature, the legislator made to the law that designated schools as ed choice districts. So we went from 120 school buildings to 1,228 school buildings in the state of Ohio over a three year period. <clears throat> So if you're keeping track for Westerville, we're already losing $11.5 million on an annual basis from being underfunded from the school funding system that's in place in Ohio. We're losing $4 million of local tax dollars to the charter schools. And now with the Ed Choice deduction, so there's two different pieces to this. There's the income base that's state funded. So the state pays for all of those vouchers that Dr. Kellogg was talking about. If they're at 200% of the poverty level, they're eligible for an Ed Choice voucher and the state will fund that voucher. The designated schools, the schools on the designated school list, that's all funded from the state. And if a student qualifies under both, so they are income eligible and they're in a designated school, assigned to a designated school, the default is to go to the designated school so that the district picks up the tab. And the state also limited the amount that they would pay for the scholarships under the state funded portion based on the current appropriations. The district doesn't have that ability to limit the amount that we'll pay because we can't do that. So for the current year, we have 597 students that we know about. So these are students that we have in our power school system because we provide some sort of service to them like transportation. If that attend 29 private or parochial schools. Of the 23 of the 29 private schools are Ed Choice school providers, which means that any students that are residing in those attendance areas for the school buildings that attend those schools would technically be eligible depending on what the state does with um, the grades one through eight. So the K through eight deductions is $4,650 per student. It's not subject to a state share index and it's not subject to any cap. And nine through 12 is 6,000 per student. So the estimated impact of the Ed Choice vouchers for Westerville City Schools is a potential of between two and a half to $3 million per year. And I wanna reiterate that, Doug, that Westerville will not receive any additional state money for these students because we are flat funded based on FY19 enrollment. 